Okay, so what I've done is uh, I've cut out the boards, uh, two by fours that I'm going to use for the um, for the uh, door. There's going to be three two by fours that go in the center this way, and then this is the bottom, and this is the top over here. This is a two by six, and um, uh, that's a two by four is all on the bottom. The two by six is up here for a reason because. I'll show you the hardware that's going to hang off of here uh, to hold the door up. Now what I've done is to, um, on, the, on the corners here, is I've used a, 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 a bit of joinery that's called a half lap. So I can attach this uh, with some uh, screws and then glue this. Let me zoom in and show you what I mean. So this is what a half lap looks like. I've taken on the bandsaw and uh, cut this along here and then trimmed it here. So basically I've taken out half the width of the board here and then um, this would be the length of whatever particular board. This is a sample cut that was for the 2x6. As you can see here, there's the half lap and then you do that to each board and you put it together and it fits nice and flush and then once I glue this and, and screw it together this will be a nice uh, uh, corner here. So I'm doing that on the four corners to start. Then I'm going to go and use pocket joinery, I believe, on these, and probably shoot in some lag screws going in there. All right, let me get rolling again. Okay, so let's get this thing uh, glued together. So there's the half lap right there on the 2x6 and the 2x4. So what we're going to do here is I have some screws that are inch and a quarter that should get right through there and not shoot out the other end and jab me in the finger. I am going to use a, can you see that? There we go. Uh, it's a ultimate glue, but it's a exterior interior and since this is outside that's what I'm using so we'll put a goodly amount on here put some on this side I'll do the other side while I'm at it but I'm gonna put it right on top of there all right I'm sorry to bore you with that and then we'll give it a little flip rooney Move it around a little bit to get that glue nice and spread out there. And let's see, probably something that we should do is check to make sure that it is square. And let me go grab that real quick. I would sing to you now while I'm doing this as an intermission, but uh, you don't want to hear that singing. Uh, you, would, you would definitely. Uh, report me to YouTube for that. So let's make sure that this is square and it's not. Okay. There we go. This is square glue all over the hands and we'll pick a couple of screws and shoot them right in there. There, that's what I want to see, that glue gushing and gushing out of there. Some of it. Since I like to overdo everything, and uh, I'll put one in the middle for fun. Okay, there we go. All right, so I got all four corners glued together and screwed. Uh, so what I want to do is check to make sure that it is square to uh, each corner. So what you do is 
you go from one corner, and I have uh, nine and a quarter inches, and then you go from the other corner to the other corner, and I have nine foot quarter inch. So that means that this is now square uh, and, and it is in alignment. And the other thing when you're building something that gets to be this kind of size here is to make sure that it's going to fit out the door. Because um, there was a relative of mine who will remain uh, nameless, uh, my dad, who built a round table down in the basement. Uh, and we just had a little door that came out of the basement area. Well, it didn't, he got it all done, and it didn't fit out the door. So, uh, that's a lesson that you have to learn the hard way. And uh, so you always have to make sure it's going to fit out the door if you're building a big project. Otherwise, you'll be cutting it in half or taking it apart and maybe breaking it. Okay, well, I, uh, I got it done. What I decided to do was to add some extra stuff in here. So what I did was put these cross braces in here, going straight down here, and then I put the uh, 45s in each corner and attached them. So now it's uh, hopefully going to stay nice and flat. Uh, I decided to put this extra stability in here because I'm going to be putting um, the vinyl product on there and uh, once that's on there, it's not really going to give any structural um, integrity to this door. So everything has to be in this. So if you wanted to build something like this, uh, it was pretty easy to do. And you could um, put, you know, any type of uh, siding on it or whatever. But this is your, you know, bare bones uh, frame. So next is to uh, go get the rail system up and get this thing hung and uh, ready to go to put on uh, all the siding. Okay, I have the rail in place. What I've done is put these hanger straps in there every two feet. This is a 10-footer uh, rail. Also, what I've done is, because I want to pull it out a little bit, and I might have to uh, work on that a little bit. And see, I put some spacers in there. I wanted to bring the door out from the wall. Those may or may not stay in. We'll see about that. And then what I've done is attach the rail. Let me go up this ladder here. Using uh, these lag screws. And as you can see, they go into the post here. Uh, so they're going in where there's some supports behind them. And uh, I was lucky to get a lot of them into the post. Alright, so this is the trolley set of wheels that gets placed inside of here. Oh, sorry about that. And then it'll slide along. Now I have this bracket here. There's a nut on the top side and a nut on the bottom side. And then the door will fit where my hand is right here and um, so let me go attach this to the door okay the first step was to drill the holes uh, using this as a template and I came in about four inches the directions say to come in at least uh, three inches in uh, I came in four and um, so that's where uh, that will hang now these carriage bolts will then go in there. There's three of them. And then on the top end, I'm going to have to drill a hole down through there. Because as you can see, this would be the, carrot, the uh, bracket here. And you see how that bolt right there protrudes? And that will protrude kind of into the top of the door. So let me uh, get a hole drilled for that. Okay, I have this trolley and uh, this assembly uh, attached on here. One thing I want to point out is in the directions, 
this being the outside of the door, it says that the carriage bolt goes this way from the inside, even though it has this little nut squared area here that would fit in here so that the carriage bolt will not spin when you go to tighten it. But that's what the directions say. Um, I sure hope that that is, uh, I, I can see why, because you wouldn't want this rubbing against the wall. However, it just seems crazy that this is here. So it might be that they use this for multiple applications. Well, I'm going to go with the directions and see what happens. I'll be really sad if I have to yank it down again. Okay, so I got the door hung. Let me uh, show you a few things that were problematic that I had to come up with uh, some fixes for. Up here on the end, I don't know if you can see that right there, that bolt hanging down there, I had to make a stop so that the thing didn't come out, the door didn't come right off the rail. So that was one little uh, addition that I had to do. Uh, let's see, there's another one down here. I bought this piece, you see, and I had to put a roller on the back side. It only has one in the front, and I wanted to keep the thing from going backwards and forwards once the uh, vinyl is installed on the wall, so it wouldn't crash into that. So that was another little addition that I did. Of course, I put a handle on here, and once I get the vinyl, I will uh, take it off and adjust it. Up here is also another stop. Don't mind the goat, they're hungry. That's what that sound is in the background. And then on the bottom, as you can see, I put a bracket on here so that this will hold, once the door is closed, the wind from getting a hold of it and flapping it out. Now I'll figure out some kind of latching system once I get the vinyl on. Oh yeah, and then on the bottom, on the track there, I had some flashing left over from a greenhouse. And so you could see now that, let me zoom in on that. You see that rides right up against there. And the, the vinyl will go over, where'd it go? Will go over the top of that white flashing. And that way that'll just keep it from wearing down the wood. I didn't use treated on the door because I don't like treated because it warps because it's not kiln dried you know they add all that good stuff to it and so um, that's why I don't like that so this is Idaho uh, premium fur I think anyway uh, let me uh, show you how this thing operates I like the door to work very nice, and that's why I worked hard on this one. So, look at how easily it slides, it stays right in the track, it gets to the stop, and stays right in with those rollers that I put on the bottom. And then when it gets over to the other side, it hits that. Like I said, I'll put a latch in here of some sort after I get all the vinyl on. Well, I hope you learned something and uh, that this was helpful. This is how I... Uh, put up a uh, barn door on my lumber storage area. Now, um, this will, uh, this should work good. I didn't want to put sliding, I mean, uh, doors that swing out because I want to be able to park my truck over here and then the doors would be in the way and I couldn't get in and out. And uh, just be aware of one thing, that if you decide to go this route, uh, that the hardware can get pretty pricey. To, uh, to put all this stuff up. I was pretty surprised about that. But it's worth it to me to have the convenience and not have to deal with the, uh, the other doors. So I hope you like uh, my videos. Uh, this is the Homestead Handyman. And uh, please uh, like, share, subscribe. And give me the old thumbs up.